You've been looking at the use of low molecular weight heparin dose reductions in the context of uh, thrombocytopenia in patients with cancer. Why did you want to look at dose reductions? Isn't this just a, an obvious thing at the moment? Well, as you know, in cancer patients, thrombosis is very common. And up until very recently, low molecular weight heparins have been the mainstay of therapy. Treating a thrombosis with any anticoagulant, including low molecular weight heparin, is associated with bleeding. In addition, thrombocytopenia from the chemotherapy or other causes is also common in the cancer patients. And there's been no guidance on how to balance the need for maintenance of anticoagulation in the setting of thrombocytopenia. Right, so the, the big issue was what? The big issue is there has been no prospective program to provide guidance on what to do with anticoagulation in the setting of cancer-associated thrombocytopenia. Mm. So basically, a number of bodies have recommended a dose reduction algorithm, which was purely based on judgment, which is perfectly good to start with, but they've never been validated. So we set up those guidelines at Sloan Kettering, and we were able to do a three-year cohort analysis, a quality assessment analysis, and basically validated the safety and efficacy of the guidelines. And you were able to get data uh, originating from 15,000 patients. You got a couple of very good groups, didn't you? Yes, we did. So we started with 15,000 patients over a three-year period who had a thrombosis and were on therapeutic doses of anticoagulation. From that group, we found 143 episodes of thrombocytopenia that lasted at least seven days. And for this purpose, we're referring to thrombocytopenia as under 50,000 platelets. In those patients, our dosing, our um, institutional guidelines called for holding anticoagulation with platelet counts under, under 25,000, excuse me, holding anticoagulation with platelets under 25,000, approximately 50% dose reduction between 25 and 50, and maintenance of full dose over 50,000. Now, those seem reasonable ideas. Yes. I didn't come up with them de novo. This was sort of a consensus of what a number of experts, including ourselves, have felt was appropriate, but no one knew if it was good or not. Right, so what have you been doing now? So we basically took our three years experience while we were still using anoxaparin as our primary anticoagulant, and we were able to demonstrate that in 143 episodes of thrombocytopenia in 102 patients, there was no major hemorrhages and there were no recurrent thromboses during that period of time, which was extremely gratifying. And these were high-risk patients. These are patients on chemotherapy with metastatic cancer. So what is it exactly that you can say now that you couldn't say before? Well, the guidance that's out there from ASCO, AC, NCCN, other organizations, as far as dose reduction, seems to be holding. We use the same guidelines. We didn't come up with a novel strategy. But using that strategy, basically there was, um, you can't give a, a, a percent when you have no events but there was clearly no evidence that we were jeopardizing safety or efficacy, and the patients did well in that regimen. So we believe that this validates what, and provides reassurance, what many doctors have been doing. So what can you now say to doctors about uh, dose reductions of uh, low molecular weight heparin uh, in thrombocytopenia in patients with cancer? We basically say these are standard guidelines. We recommend that the thought leaders, the hematologists or the people driving the practice at given institutions educate their colleagues that this is what should be adhered to. It shouldn't be just a crapshoot, it should be a planned um, guidance. And when adhered to, the risk of failure, the risk of recurrent thrombosis from that brief interruption of anticoagulation is not high. And the risk of major bleeding with the dose reduction is also not high. And that, I think, provides a very important reassurance. We also emphasize that this would have to be independently validated with other anticoagulants. As more of us are shifting to the new direct oral anticoagulants, this kind of approach would have to be independently validated. We can't extrapolate from one class of drug to the next.